Oh. Well, Alex, you've really landed yourself in the poo this time. Oh. What a predicament. Thank you for downloading What a Predicament, a podcast that peers into the predicaments of the modern day and age. My name is Alex, and when I'm not wallowing in filth, having got myself trapped in an industrial-sized septic tank in a botched prison break, I'm out getting to the bottom of predicaments big and small. My particular predicament of being stuck in here has given me a lot of time to think about my experience of being in jail And let me tell you, I was exposed to all sorts of things. Most of the exposure came in the form of large, intimidating, tattooed men. It really harkens back to the days when tattoos were limited to navy people and tough guys, criminals and outsiders. They were real tattoos, the kind that make you want to avert your eyes. Today, however... My tattoo, it's an album cover of my favourite artist, Elliot Smith. I have two. I've got one that matches with my sister that I got for us to share, and it's a cat on my wrist. And I have another one saying happily ever after, and that's on my side. Pretty much I have uh, music notes coming out of my shoulder, and it spirals all the way down to my elbow. So I have an anime girl on my arm, and an octopus on my leg, and also a little cat on my ankle. Uh, New Zealand with a tanifa wrapped around it. My one is quite confusing. People see it and can't understand it. It's actually, it's like a Japanese koi fish in a kind of a circular pattern. Like you're looking down on a rose, but then there's a human eye in the middle. So it's quite an abstract kind of thing. But the whole thing is, is just red, like a red rose. I've got a figure eight knot tattoo, double bow on my forearm. Uh, it sort of represents me and my fiance. Um, to be honest, mate, I think I've got about 12 last time I counted. Um, lots of them are words um, and birds. I've also got a Cheshire cat on my uh, left arm, which is um, pretty crazy looking, actually. I'm pretty sure by the time I'm 60, that's going to look pretty weird, but that's all right. I mean, that's, that's nature. When did tattoos go mainstream? What was the turning point that made them so acceptable? When did everyone start getting them? Well, some people at least started getting tatted up as far back as our records go. The oldest preserved human had tattoos. Otzi, the mummy found preserved in ice in the Italian Alps back in 1991, had a total of 61 tattoos. The tattoos seem to have been made via cuts in the skin, and then charcoal was rubbed into the wounds. It sounds primitive, but it worked. They stood the test of time, still being visible over 5,000 years later. It's possible he was a common thug, a regular hooligan, but you can probably assume that if this one specimen we've got from that time period had tattoos, it's likely other people at that time also sported some sick ink. So perhaps the idea of tattoos being regulated to the underworld is a more recent idea. In fact, throughout humankind's history, people have been giving and receiving tattoos for all sorts of reasons. Ancient Egyptians, Romans and Greeks all had their own traditions of tattooing. And my home country of New Zealand has a very close relationship to the art form. If you've never seen the paintings of Charles Goldie, they're incredible, capturing the Māori moko with brilliant photorealism. Māori might have earned their tattoos as a rite of passage, but is that still the case for everyone else? Well, maybe, in a less formal way. Over a third of Kiwis under 30 have tattoos, and those are old stats, it's bound to be more now. Tattoos no longer have the antisocial stigma around them. The prejudice when going for a job interview with visible tattoos is going out the window. But when did this all change? Tattoo, Brute. I decided to ask an expert, an internationally acclaimed Kiwi tattooer by the name of Kapili Tupo. He is the perfect person to talk to about tattooing going mainstream, as his art has not only taken him around the world, but his fresh take on the traditional tattoo has been sought after by companies for t-shirt designs, hip flask carvings, and beer can designs. 
unfortunately, one of the downsides to tattooing being so popular right now is Capelli is a damn busy man and not so easy to pin down for an interview. So I realized the only way I'd get to sit down in a room with him was to man up and get a tattoo myself. I figure if such a huge chunk of the population has them, I may as well jump on the bandwagon if I'm really going to get to the bottom of this predicament. And I can hear the haters now. If everyone jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? And the answer is, my fucking country invented bungee jumping. For the sake of the podcast and both of my listeners, I'll do it. And come on, how bad can it hurt, really? Surely I'm as tough as at least the 20% of the population have toughed it out through a tat? Right? Brother, you ready? Yes, sir. Well, it turns out that a busy tattoo studio is not the best place to get a clean audio recording. Capilli and I had a good chat, but the audio I got isn't really usable. In between the tattoo machine, the trap music, and me wincing my way through two hours of getting zapped. So, you know, no interview. And now I'm stuck with this tattoo. <sighs> so after all that, I still had to track down a tattooer to talk to. And I wasn't about to get tattooed again, so I teed up some time with Benjamin Raditz. Another died in the wool, a skin, Auckland tattoo heavyweight... This time, over the phone, far away from those punishing needles. How how long have you been tattooing? I did my first tattoo in 2003. Has it changed quite a bit since then? It's, what, 13 years? Yeah, it changed with the use of the smartphone and uh, social media. Yeah, just, like, got a, another generation of people involved? Yeah, yeah, just got a whole bunch of people now bit more into it, I, I guess, for, the, for some different reasons. Is it sort of um, like a double-edged sword? Is there a good side to it where you get a lot of people who are genuinely into the, the art form and the community and that into it, or does it tend to be mostly people coming from outside, like, oh, can you do me a sleeve in one sitting or something? Um, no, there's still a... There's still a decent amount of people wanting cool stuff, but there is a growing amount of people bringing their phones and whatnot and now just, you know, saying, hey, I want this, and there's no room for um, compromise. It has to be what they want, even if it's a shit design and whatnot. Yeah, I think that's like the first lesson you learn is you've got to trust the person who who does it all day, every day, I think you guys know what works and what doesn't work. And if someone says something, I'm not going to feel like I know more than you or something about like, oh, but it has to have this like this much detail or whatever. Well, I think that's just the, the ruse of it all now with the TV shows and the social media and everyone's a fucking expert on it. And they can walk in and they'll quite happily question your abilities and skills. Quite happily. It's, it's quite shit, actually. <laughs> Would you say it's like fully mainstream now? Like what what happened? You talked about smartphones and TV shows. What was the catalyst when you saw it go fully into the mainstream? Um, no, I guess without a doubt it was the the introduction to the of the TV shows. Without a doubt, I was there. I was overseas when all this stuff happened, and I met the the creators of the first show. Is that like person, the Miami was, Yank or? Yeah, yeah, I met those guys, and um, they were doing a, a tour around Europe, and it was it was just shit. We were at a party in Germany, and we all had to sign release forms. It was so scripted. It was just bollocks. It was had nothing to do with the tattooing world that I knew and that I got into it for. It was it's everyone sitting around jacking each other off, really. The scariest people you want to tattoo now as a tattooer is not the big tattooed fucking muscle dude anymore it's the 16 year old gaggle of blonde white girls walking through the door because they want stuff that can't be done they want stuff in places that can't be tattooed with ease they want stuff 
now they want it. Yeah, they're the ones that I'm more afraid of. They're, you know, the, the ones with um, a, a bit of, well, a lot of self entitlement and people don't like being told no anymore and, and, and don't like being said, I don't want to. You know, there, there has to be boundaries and limits now, and I just think across the board, not just in tattooing and, and, and everything these days, if, if you can't provide a, surface, a service, you're going to get fucking grilled on the internet on some shitty review site. Oh, yeah. It's going to be, you know, and them Yelpers. You're going to get fucking, your name will get put up on other social platforms. No, no, one, no one really gives a shit about personal stuff anymore as long as they get what they want i was wondering actually what's the difference it's funny because i'll hear people mock girls about like oh haha she's got another figure eight tattoo or another feather or whatever it is but um and you kind of go haha they all look the same but then it's like what is the difference between one of those versus like the other traditional staples like a ship or a panther head or something like what what makes these tattoos last that that make them so Iconic. They're, they're not. They're not just um, trends, if you will. I mean, that that you know, everyone can get what they want in tattooing. Man, at the end of the day, I'm just another. I'm just another person putting tattoos on people. If I don't do it, they'll go down the road and get someone to do it. And you know, I don't want to to steer people away. I don't think the panther head or the sailing ship is any more cooler per se than the feather and the, the infinity symbol. But I've seen it. I've, I've seen it come and go already t- 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 twice now in, in the relatively short amount of time I've been tattooing. Uh, phases that the, the young people get in. It's fashion, man. That's what fashion's all about, is trends coming and going. And For me, I'll always want to tattoo stuff that comes from somewhere, that has a bit of tradition. You know, like, I mean, the the, the, the number eight, the infinity symbol, doesn't come from anywhere. It has no roots and and fucking tattooing as far as i'm concerned but a a pirate ship does and you know what i mean yeah well what's like um you talked about sort of uh, annoying trends in customers and stuff but do you see trends in actual tattooing like what other tattooists and you certainly don't have to like name names or anything but you see just general trends where people are getting into doing different stuff that isn't necessarily going to stand the test of time well, that's what tattooing's all about now, man. You know, people don't really. A lot of a lot of people are getting into this industry without sitting under doing an apprentice system. You know, they're just getting it, getting their equipment, and going straight into it and tattooing straight off the bat, not knowing what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not here to to slag other tattooers off. You know, at the end of the day, we're all just trying to make some money and and get the bills paid and whatnot, but. I think there is a difference between tattooers who carry the torch, you know, that that will will continue it for a while, not just doing tattoos knowingly that aren't going to age well, that will will look shit in a few years. You know, they just they just want that paycheck, they want that photograph, and they want all their Instagram likes. Social media is a part of tattooing now. I mean, whether you like it or not, you have to have a bit of presence online. I mean, just just so that the punters out there, you know, they can they can see that you're staying current and whatnot. I mean, as shallow as that sounds, I mean, there's great tattooers out there who probably still don't even know what an Instagram is or a Facebook, but they've probably got 20 plus years under their belt of clientele and word of mouth that they don't need this sort of stuff. Dude, I, all I can say is I'm glad I didn't get tattooed at 16 because the shit I wanted then, I'd just have like skate company logos and shit all over me. Oh, it's better than having fucking a, n- a number of other things, I can tell you that. That's where all the cool shit comes from, is all them old skateboard graphics. The 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 tattoo world is still good. There is still a lot of good stuff out there. Um, my advice for everyone out there who's wanting to get tattooed or look at um, getting new tattoos, don't be blinded by the um, the little screen that's in front of you and have a bit more faith and trust in the, the tattoo shops and the tattooers that you're going to visit and um, yeah just just trust them don't you, you know you're not experts in this industry that's why you come to us and you know your your designs that are on your phone they're not original we've seen them all before if you want originality 
you need to come to the shop and see the stuff that we have and that we can provide. Some of the other basic questions about tattoos I can now answer myself as a tattooed person. Do they hurt? Yes, but it's all relative. Some areas suck more than others. So when the artist moves off those sore areas onto another part, you almost feel relieved, despite the fact that you're still being stabbed by a bunch of needles at a rate of anywhere between 50 and 3,000 times a minute, times quite a few minutes. Like Benjamin said, do your homework and trust the artist. Whatever your idea is, they've heard it before. If they make a recommendation or a suggestion, it's coming from experience. They know more about it than the average punter, and the more into the idea the artist is, the better the final product's going to be. Thanks to the TV shows and social media, tattoos are now firmly planted in the mainstream. And I don't think it makes it less cool just because the subculture has become... culture. Everyone likes Goodfellas, it doesn't make it less rad just because it's appealing to a whole lot of people. And there will always be levels to the community. If you do want tattoos as a rejection of the mainstream, you can still do that. A bold heck off on the forehead will do it nicely. You just have to think outside the box. It only took five and a half thousand years, but tattoos are here and they're not going anywhere. Because that's the thing about tattoos. They're permanent. Thanks to Benjamin Raditz for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks to everyone who came in and shared their tattoos at the beginning of the episode. Thanks to Kapili Tupo for the sweet new tattoo. You can check it out on the What A Predicament Instagram page at Watercat Productions. Thanks to Graveless for letting me use this track right here, Stay True, which you can find on their Bandcamp page. The opening theme music for this podcast is a derivative of The Little Hotel of Horrors by Decimentarium, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0. This podcast is a What a Cat production. Find yourself in a bit of a marketing or production predicament and in need of some copywriting or sound engineering work with the kind of flair you've come to expect from this podcast, then I'm your guy. Email whatacatproductions at gmail.com. What a Predicament is available online at watacat.co.nz, on the Stitcher and Podcast Addict apps, on iTunes, and everywhere good podcasts are found. Thanks to you for finding this and for listening. Speaking of listening, I'm listening closely and I think something's going on out there. We're on the move. I think the septic tank I'm trapped in has been hooked up to a truck. And it sounds like we're going somewhere. Man, just when you thought it was bad, the only thing worse than spending a week in a prison septic tank is being in the same septic tank when it's moving and sloshing around. (laughs) Yeah, I can only speculate where this truck is headed, and if I'm right, you can check back into the podcast next week for a whole new predicament. I'm looking at calling it Tattoo Brute which, you know, has the Shakespearean U2 because everyone has tattoos, but also it's like, you know, tough guy, brute, has that in it. Does that make any sense? Yeah.